Today we are at uh, the James and Ethel Grey Park, which is in sort of the Dunkelt Mulrose um, area. And what the residents of the community have done is that they decided to take ownership of the park and take care of it and uplift it. I actually was here a couple of years ago, might have been 2019, when they were, you know, saying that they've raised some money to make it decent. They fenced it just because of the high crime rates and the abuse and the theft that was taking place. They started to uplift it. They got sponsors to come together. Now, a few years later, they literally have built paddle courts. It's got its own little center. They have a little um, park that the kids can play in as well and a playground. So today's the launch of it and all the relevant stakeholders are going to be here. And the residents did it all by themselves without getting a cent from government for it. So good on them. And yeah, I'm excited for this one. And then when we're done, we rush to radio. going to be your program director for this morning. There's a man by the name of Sunil Ganesh who emotionally blackmailed me to come here. And I was here, I think it was 2019, also then. So you can imagine the things he's holding over my head are very serious. They are marinating over time. <laughs> we have the power in our hands as community members to do the things in our communities that we want to have the things in our communities that we want. I don't live in this neighborhood. It's a neighborhood I aspire to live in. When you're like, one day, I will be, I will be there, ne? And, but I've always been around this neighborhood because I have friends that live in this neighborhood. And in around 2016, 2017, a friend of mine that lived in the area brought me to this park. And it was the type of park that we had to pick a time that was strategic because we were two women with small children just coming to be in a park in South Africa. And I remember it was Heritage Day, so it was actually around this time of the year. And by the, the moment the sun was starting to go down, interesting characters started to make their way into the park and were like, that's our cue to go home. And the kids were screaming because they wanted to play some more. Fast forward to 2019, where you know this became a completely different space. It was cleaner there was less crime, and the residents and the community said, we're going to take ownership. And it's one thing, when you want to take ownership of a space, yes, it has the perks, but it also comes with the responsibility of taking care of it. And the government has a long list of things on their to-do list, guys. Did you see Briggs? There's so much. If we as community members and residents of the little spaces that we're in can take the initiative to especially those that have the privilege to and have the capacity to, then that's what we need to be doing. Fast forward now from 2019 to now, there is a paddle tennis court, which is the absolute new craze. It is so, so fun. And what a better way to incorporate something that will also encourage wellness, interaction between adults and kids, but more importantly, a space that is safe. The first thing I asked Sunil is, where's the bar? He said, don't worry. <laughs> I said, I'm opening Property 24 immediately. All right, let us invite now the man, I call him the man of the moment because he forced me to say that. <laughs> Chairperson of the James and Earl Grey Park Foundation, Mr. Sunil Ganesh. We decided to set one KPI, and the KPI was for a woman and a child to walk in this park without any fear within the hours of the, the open hours of the park, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. sundown. Now, I, I'm not attacking government, but I know in government you have a lot of KPIs. We're a small organization, so we just chose one KPI. And, and, and I think we kind of like 
took it bite size and, and that's where we were. Graciously supported by city parks in getting security improved in the park and to give residents a sense that they would be safe. But importantly, I sat here with uh, s some weeks ago uh, with uh, Ms. Cheryl Carola. She came to visit the park. She wanted to see what it was about. And she said to me, whatever you do in life, make sure that it's able to wash its own face. Now, you can interpret that any way you want to. But the long and short of that is that the sustainability is not about the ecological sustainability. It's also about the sustainability in assisting our partner, which is Johannesburg City Parks and Zoo, in putting our shoulder to the wheel, in being able to take some pressure of them so that much needed resources can be diverted to less privileged communities, to less privileged societies that are out there. And we've seen, we know we have the highest Gini coefficient in the world. So the inequity in our societies is large. <coughs> and by driving such initiatives, the opportunity cost of the funding is then established and utilized in the communities that require them most. So up next to address is going to be Andrew Harris from the panel and social development, also host of our after party. This event, this 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 center was really was really born out of the idea that you know, if you're going to try and sustain an environment, um, being a park within, within, within or, or any environment that's, that's shared amongst the, the community, we need a sustainable business model in order to make sure that there's, there's consistently revenues being pushed into the park and we don't necessarily need to rely on the city to do so. And through our partners, the Paddle Building Company and Barrow Construction, we've managed to build what you see uh, here today. Um, what happens on a monthly basis is a, is, a, is, a, is a portion of revenue gets put back into the park so that consistently the, the people that are wanting to improve it don't have to run around looking for sponsorship, looking for donations, consistently being on the back foot. And we can actually sit down as a, as a, as a community and we can move forward in, in, in fixing, maintaining, improving the environment, the much larger environment that you see here. You know, we have a we have a we, we, we have a bird sanctuary down the bottom that needs that needs works. We need to rehabilitate the frogs in the area, etc. Um, just to 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 really wrap up, I think is to remember that it is within our hands. We we cannot wait for government to take responsibility of our communities when we are the ones that live in them. So. We are going to take this blueprint. I'm going to be biased and want my neighborhood next, Sunil. Please come to Northcliffe. Um, but more importantly, the, the less privileged areas where we know that young people do not have anything to do, the sporting facilities, the arts and culture, the recreational um, activities, let us use this as inspiration to go back to all our different neighborhoods, be it Soshanguve, be it Soweto, be it Alex, and use the blueprint. And more importantly, you're not just trying to build something, it's you're trying to build and then have it sustain itself. I'm given opportunity for the plug to be unveiled in three, two, one. Congratulations, the James and Ethel Gray Park Foundation. are talking handmade contemporary fair as well as mama's boys we are joined now by Likaonolo Vilagazi who's chef founder and owner of mama's boys Likaonolo welcome to the show thank you so much for joining us many years ago 20 years ago so uh, there was a family mandate uh, in my family that all of us had to go to a certain school it was in Pimville in Soweto yeah. um, that school my grandmother was there and she, she taught like four subjects but it just so happens that my great grandmother stayed at the cottage at the school. Oh wow! And after some time, she decided to turn the cottage into into uh, a canteen, a school yes. canteen. So she would serve the kids there, maguinya, lidikota, etc. Yeah. You know, street food, South African street food. And I'd get to school early and help her prepare these meals. So I think that's exactly when the bug bit me when I was about seven years old. 
Yes, yeah, seeing the people enjoy the food, especially when I see the food doing the same thing as it does to me. Yeah. You know, the chefs call it the ratatouille moment. Yes. So it's that scene on ratatouille where the critic eats the food and it, it transports him home immediately and yeah. he feels like he's at home in his mother's kitchen. So when I see people reacting to the meals in that manner, that's what excites me and keeps me going. I am trying to create a legacy. I'm, I'm actually a third generation in the food service business. Uh, from my great grandmother wow. to then my mother, who was known as Mama. Yes. So everyone called her. In fact, her name was Mama. Mm. Um, some called her Us Mama, Mama Mama. I can't um, believe you're saying that Us Mama. It's a joke at home that <laughs> <laughs> all of my friends or my kids' aunts yeah. become Us Mama. Like you Us Mama. Mama. Yeah, yeah, yes. So I love that you are sharing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. or, or Mama or Mama Mama or yeah. Mama Mama Mama, etc. Yeah. You know. Um, so everyone called her Mama and. Hence, everyone around us and our friends called my brother and I Mama's Boys. Yeah. Oh, where are Mama's Boys? Are they around? Yeah. So, um, as an ode to my mother, who, who we lost a few years, about 10 years ago uh, mm. uh, from cancer, um, I named the business Mama's Boys as, oh, as an ode to act of homage to her. So I think it's switched with my mother um, in, in the early 90s when she started Mama's Caterers. And, you know, she made it an official business. And, mm. and you know, we had a lot of clients, corporate clients, government clients, um, uh, executives from companies. Um, so she made that move early in the 90s. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, many years on, I decided to, you know, properly formalize the space yes. and, you know, get a bricks and mortar restaurant, um, get a space where we can do our production, um, you know, use young chefs, use uh, 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 students from, from culinary schools to mm. come and assist. Um, so I think, you know, the, the formalization of the business really began in the 90s, but now it's a bit more. The only things I watched are things I needed to watch for work, which it doesn't <laughs> count, you know? So I'll, I'll tell you what happened. Yes. I tried to start watching The Monkey King. Yes. And my son and I started, and then just before we saw The Monkey, he moved on to something else in his life, and I had to follow him. Wait, so we started... <laughs> Literally a few seconds into the movie, you can't watch movies with two year olds. I must just accept. Oh, okay. And then later he said, Mommy, where's Monkey King? I'm like, How? <laughs> so I'm gonna try again with Monkey King. Yes. But tell us what is out there for us to watch. Documentary about the life and times of Babumshan Shabalala, Joseph Shabalala, the mm. leader, the founder and leader of the Smith band, um, um, Lady Smith, like Mambazo. Yes. Um, the whole journey, it was a very spiritual journey. I actually got to see this. I have to mention this. I, I, yes. I got to see this documentary way before it came out at cinemas a few months ago at uh, the BAI showcase. Those mm. who know about it will would have seen it at that event. Um, the BAI showcase is, is hosted by yes, the student and we got a pre-screening of it there. It's a very, very touching and heartfelt and also very informative documentary. Yes. And it helped because I grew up with, um, at a certain point, it was my grandfather who was just playing Stars on every Sunday. Can and I just some... hear your... <laughs> <laughs> later, later when I close off, I, I have to prep myself. Okay. Honestly, because we have, we actually are a country of like a lot of legends yes. when it comes to the arts, yes. music and film in general, just the arts. But because we move on so much, yes. so quickly from things, we end up just like moving on from a lot of moments we maybe should have just stuck with for like yes. two seconds. Yes, I got you. Right.